You know, I was telling you about the graduation down in Washington, D.C. yesterday, and uh, suddenly, little Cindy, my middle daughter, is no longer a little girl. In that cap and gown, she looked like a grown-up young lady. I don't know, you don't uh, lose a teenage daughter, you just gain another sheepskin. <laughs> That's two down and one more to go. I got Patty out, now Cindy. Got Penny to go yet, and then Scooter and I, four, I think, will uh, take a tour of the United States. Not a bad idea. Yeah, because it's... Well, you've been around the United States a lot more than I have. I mean, you took a trip, didn't you? Yellowstone. Mm, I'm dying to get out there. There's so much to see here in the States. Traveling out of the country is fair, but I think there's so much to be seen right here. And that's what we're going to do. Great. Well, you get around schools, you're dangerous. Oh, I am. I mean, I listen to these professors <laughs> make these talks, you know, and uh, these big words. and <laughs> It is thrilling, but as I said, a little sad, too. Now, if I can get them married off in a hurry, then uh, three of us can take off. <laughs> Not that I want to get rid of my three daughters, but I got to look out for Scooter. Spoken like a typical father. <laughs> oh, I don't want to get them married, but I'm going to run a one end. Huh? <laughs> All right, Clark is walking up to the batter's box. He'll be leading off. They had camera day here, so we had a little bit of a delay in one of the promotions. The Yankees will be having a big day on Saturday when the Yankees get back. Ladies' Day and Charm Day, the Yankees... Distributing the remaining supply of the charms that remain from Mother's Day. And, of course, it's Senior Citizens Day. So I hope you take advantage of the new bus service. We're we'll telling you about it throughout the ball game. But right now, it's Gary Bell against Horace Clark, and here's the first pitch of the game. It swung on and missed strike one. I think it's the fourth game in a row that Horace Clark has swung at the first pitch. They tried to get ahead of him, and he's been jumping on it. He missed this one. He lined hard. Yesterday, got a base hit day before. Bell delivered. Foul back, and a strike two. Horace Clark batting at 226. The Yankees will be leaving after the ball game, heading back to New York for a homestand. And boy, that'll really be novel. I'm telling you, we have really been on the road. Every time you turn around, you're putting your bags in the lobby and heading for an airport. Clark lines one up the middle of base hit. Gary Bell got two quick strikes on Clark, threw him a curveball, and Horace sent it right back up the middle, and he's on first base. And that brings up Tom Trey. Trey is hitting 203, four home runs, 14 runs battered in. In the outfield, Wagner in left field, Hinton's in center field, Lee May is in right field. Play trash deep. Play him to pull. Ball game just getting started. Gary Bell. Bell is one and three. Delivers a curveball for strike one. Stottlemyre has won three and lost four. That last one he lost. One to nothing in Baltimore. Bell has lost some tough ones. Clark a good lead at first. Draws a throw. Makes it back. Bob Stewart is the first base umpire. Valentine is umpire from second base. Only three umpires working. Clark draws another throw and he's back. And a dive back. Mickey Manley on deck hitter. Here's the pitch. Swung on a high foul. the Cleveland dugout it is in the sand. Wind will be a factor here. It's blowing straight in. So almost every time I've been in this ballpark, the wind seems to blow in. Is that the way it was when you were playing? Uh, just about, Joe, with uh, Lake Erie right in back of us here, or on the side of us, wherever it is. It's a big enough lake, but uh, Gabe Ball was uh, telling us before that that determines the uh, temperature, and it doesn't get warm here until that whole lake warms up, and then it determines the way the wind is going to blow, too. Hmm. Well, that's a lot of warming up to do, it sure is. Two-strike pitch is outside, ball one. One ball, two strikes. Big ballpark here. WCSS just received word that a little girl is missing. She was a short blonde, five years old. Her name is Betty Jean Talberg. She's missing uh, for about three hours and 76 Wall Street. She knows her name and knows where she lives. Anyone have any information about her, contact 842-0395.
That's a little short blonde, five years old. She's wearing a skirt and white blouse this morning. Betty Jean Tomley. Anyone knowing their whereabouts, call 842-0395. Here's a smash foul on the first baseline, just barely foul. You know, Joe, this is the first time I've seen this ballpark with the new box seats and the new dugouts. It sure makes it look different. They added about, I think, 700 seats in the dugout. But as you notice when you were down there, the funny thing about them, you can't see them. Oh, that's right, especially me. <laughs> I need a ladder. So they're going to widen the uh, back part of it so the players can sit on the back part of the bench. Clark a lead, a good lead. Fresh takes outside, and it's two balls and two strikes. Nobody out, top of the first, no score. Horace Clark opened the ball game with a base hit, a single at center field. Gary Bell, very deliberate worker. Clark edges off the bag. He's been drawing throws. Gets a good lead, might be gone. He is going. Pitch is swung on and missed, and Sims drops the ball. Tresh is out, but Clark has himself a stolen base. And here is Mickey Mantle. home runs, 20 runs batted in. He has really been hitting. First base is open, so he'll have to widen the zone. Duke Sims walks out and points towards first base as if to tell Gary Bell, make him hit your pitch. So I want to ask you something about that last stolen base when the catcher dropped the ball. If you ever pull this trick off, I would... You ever tell a base runner that that was a foul ball? No, I never did. Uh, I know some infielders that do that. And of course, there's nothing wrong with it if you can get away with it. Here's the pitch to Mantle. It swung on and missed strike one. It's very easy because Clark was sliding. He didn't see Trash miss the ball. And it popped out of Sims' glove. It would be an easy thing for an infielder to say, hey, that was a foul ball, and have you start backing and put the tag on. You're right, dear. But you got to be smart to do that. That's why I never did it. No. No, that is a tricky plan. I know some guys where they hold the ball and say, let me kick the bag, and then you just take your foot off the bag and they tag you. Here's a one-strike pitch. Bunnett. Bell has it. He's going to make a play at first now. He's starting to go to third, and then saw he lost his play, so he flips to Whitfield. And Mantle is out. Bell to Whitfield. Clark moves on down to third. That is not a sacrifice uh, automatically. We have to wait to see. Mantle is going for the base hit. It's the umpire's judgment, so unofficially we'll just put it as a time at bat. Hey, for a guy who never pulled off all those plays, you sure know about him. <laughs> Joe Pepitone is the hitter. Pepitone doing some calisthenics in the batter's box. Pepitone was doing a routine before the game, a routine of poetry. Gets away from Duke Sims, Horace Clark is going to score, and the Yankees lead one to nothing. So Mantle getting uh, Clark over the third pays off. It's a pass ball on Duke Sims. And boy, you talk about a discount house run, but doesn't make any difference. It's up there. A single, a stolen base, moves the third on the... Ground out and score on a pass ball. Yankees lead one to nothing. Sounds like the old Dodger rally, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> it sure does. Dodgers won a pennant like that. Pepitone swings and he misses one ball and one strike. To describe the Dodgers when they were going like that, it was watching the Dodgers play it was like watching a silent movie. <laughs> Man on front was scored as a sacrifice. Outside, two balls and one strike. So I don't know what the official score is, but it was a gift. Yes, sir. Yes. Two one pitch. Swung on and missed in his two and two on Joe Pepitone. The ruling now is that if you're bunting for a base hit and you're throwing out, you're not credited with a sacrifice. You're given a time at bat. 
But in the Gore's judgment, man was sacrificing. I think he might have been eating a hot dog or something at the time, Joe. I tell you, you have to pay a gift tax on that kind <laughs> of pants. Here's the pitch. Swung on a high fly ball, right field. Lee May waiting for it, still waiting, and makes the catch. Pepitone flies to Lee May in right field. That retires the side. Yankees score one run on one hit. No errors. Nobody left on base. And the score at the end of the half inning is the New York Yankees won and the Cleveland Indians coming to bat. What does Atlantic Red Ball service mean to you? Just this. Each and every Atlantic Red Ball dealer will clean your windshield, weather permitting, and offer to check your oil. If he forgets to do either, your gasoline purchase is free. This offer may vary in some states, but the service never varies. Atlantic Red Ball dealer service is for every customer, every time. So drive in where you see the red ball sign and keep on the go with Atlantic. I guess you heard that announcement, and uh, we'll probably get a little bit of mail that we caused it. Mantle's time at bat is not credited as a sacrifice. Well, they can't hear us here in Cleveland, can they, Joe? I don't know. <laughs> it's not a sacrifice. They have just changed it. Here's Lee May. He takes it outside. Ball one. And right now on Yankee Baseball, let's pause for station identification. You're listening to Yankee Baseball on WCSS Amsterdam, New York. Today's game is being brought to you in part by the G. Kruger Brewing Company of Cranston, Rhode Island. Brewers of the world's most perfect beer, like Golden Kruger Pilsner. We have just received word that little five-year-old uh, Gene Talbert, had, Betty Gene Talbert, had been found on James Street. Thank you for your assistance. Tight pitchers, low sinker ballers. Stottlemyre delivers to May, and it's low, three balls and no strikes. The Yankees lead one to nothing. Field deep straight away for Lee May. May is batting 216. Here's the 3 0 pitch. It's low, ball four, and on four straight pitches, Lee May draws a base on ball. May is on and brings up Pete Gonzalez. Gonzalez hitting 262. We got quite a description for Gonzalez, who is a very friendly young man. They call him the Smiling Volcano. <laughs> Because when he gets mad, he gets mad. I've never seen him get that upset. Billy's always smiling, happy. That's right. I know he did it last year. I got a little upset and really erupted, as you say, the volcano. But I guess most Latins have that kind of a temperament. They get furiously mad and then get over it right away. Don't we, though? <laughs> Here's the pitch. It's a strike. <laughs> One strike. Boy, I'm telling you. My wife says I get mad at the busy signal on the phone. <laughs> Those red lights will I get me mad. <laughs> Trying to make time. Foul ball into the stands. And a strike two on Gonzalez. That was a good fastball. Gonzalez tried to check his swing. Hit his bat. Really zipped off. Stands are much closer. We were talking about it a moment ago. They've added the uh, seats here along the first and third base lines. and. Fans are pretty close, and those foul balls really go zipping in there. Two strikes to count on Gonzalez with Lee May at first base. Lee May, a good runner. Gonzalez, a ground ball, could be two. Amaro to Clark, one out. Over to first, double play, it is. Six, four, three. Gonzalez hits into a double play. And it brings up Chuck Hinton. When Stottlemyre has his good stuff, you'll see a lot of ground balls. And it's for fellas like uh, a Stottlemyre or a Gary Bell, for that matter, that groundskeepers become very important people. The way they cut the grass, by the way they fix that area in front of home plate. 
Give those infielders a chance to come up with the ground ball. Hinton takes it low, ball one. Yankees lead one to nothing. We're in the bottom of the first inning. Stottlemyre ready. Hinton takes it inside and it's ball two. Chuck Hinton is batting at 296. Four home runs, 12 runs batted in. Tuesday, a big doubleheader at the stadium. The Minnesota Twins, the Bombers will be in. I tell you, you can use that description on a lot of clubs. Twins, Detroit. Hinton smashes one in the right field, a curveball, and he has a base hit. I tell you, I was almost hypnotized by the way he hit that ball because it was such a fine piece of hitting. He waited for the curveball to break and then rent. Right now, went into it and hit it to the opposite field. That's beautiful. Oh, that is beautiful, Joan. If you try to pull that, it would been another routine ground ball to the left side. Here is Leon Wagner. Daddy Wags hitting 220. Wagner has six home runs, 15 runs batted in. Hinton a good lead. Wagner takes it low, ball one. Stottlemyre working in and out. We got Gonzalez on the ground ball as he tried to pull the sinker on the outside part of the plate. Threw a curveball to Hinton, and he just waited until the very last minute, and then snapped his wrist, and he had himself a base hit into the opposite field. It's tough to pull a sinker baller. Hinton gets a good lead off first. Stottlemyre delivers to Wagner and swung on and missed. One ball and one strike, a real good cut. Wagner is one of these hitters that when he swings, every bone in his body rattles. He just throws everything into it. Jake Gibbs wants to talk to Stottlemyre now. A lot of times in a spot like this, what happens is you don't, as a catcher, you don't particularly like the last spot that the ball was thrown. And Wagner had a real good cut, looked like it was low inside. And as a catcher, you try to remind the pitcher that that isn't what you said in the meeting where you were going to pitch him. Or you'd like to find out if maybe he switched his uh, strategy and he's going to pitch him inside. Wagner fouls one straight back. One ball and two strikes. Just getting on his first base. Yankees lead one to nothing. We're in the bottom half of the first inning. Frank Robinson has just hit his 13th home run. He leads the major leagues. He hit it in the first inning with one man on. Baltimore leads at least two to one, still batting. Frank Robinson. An amazing ball player. Wagner takes a strike over the inside corner, and he's called out on strikes, and that retires his side. Cleveland, no runs, one hit, no errors. One man left to score at the end of a complete inning. It's the New York Yankees. One, the Cleveland Indians, nothing. I've got my friend sitting here today. Yes, sir. The White Owl girl. Tell me, any new rules you'd like to see brought into the game? Only one. I give every batter who reaches first base a box of White Owl cigars. How's that going to help the game? No. More players will try to get to first base. It will make the game more interesting. Mm, it sure would. You know, you could have your own rally. Nine guys could end up at first base. But do you really think that would work? I know it would. You know how popular White Owls are. You see them everywhere. It's the famous white owl tobacco that does it. It's aged slowly, mellowed carefully to bring out the mild taste, smooth flavor. Do you really think the fans would go for that? Why not? They're all white owl fans, too. They know you get a lot more from a white owl than just smoke. For the second inning, Steve Whitaker, Jake Gibbs, and Charlie Smith. Whitaker, really been hitting the ball. He's up to 267, 28 base hits. He's not hit for the power that he's known for, but the home runs are going to come. Here's the pitch. Swung on, smash foul on the first baseline. It seems that uh, Whitaker to use a comparison is like a, a fighter starting out a fight in his way in the big leagues. He's feeling everything and he's feeling around and, and trying to find his way and get his feet on the ground. Outside, ball one, one ball, one strike. He's been going with the pitch. Hasn't been uh, 
in that real long slump, been getting his base hit. He's had a history for power, and it's like swimming or riding a bicycle, you never forget. High, fastball, two balls and one strike. Steve Whitaker, Yankees lead one to nothing. Gary Bell ready, Whitaker waits, the pitch. High, ball three. And Frank Robinson, 13 home runs. Everybody was wondering whether he would be as good a ball player as he was last year because everybody kept talking about it. he had incentive the incentive of uh, being with a new club, having been trading, was going to show him. Would he have the same kind of uh, incentive? Whitaker takes it high, ball four, draws the base on ball. But I tell you, when you talk about intangibles, it is a factor. But I guess the greatest incentive that Mr. Frank Robinson had this year was that nice, juicy contract. You're right, Joe. 100,000 reasons, Phil, mm -hmm. have a good year. But also, you know, he had that knee operation. And how many guys, uh, can you figure, besides Mantle, who have been able to bounce back from the knee operation? <laughs> He's picked up right where he left off. Oh, man. And he was even, uh, he was a little late getting in shape because uh -huh. he was uh, so busy picking up those plaques that he <laughs> didn't get a chance to work out. High fastball to Jake Gibbs, and it's ball one. Call that a strike. Jake Gibbs didn't believe it either. Boy, wind must have taken that one, Joe. <laughs> Boy, the other night, they were still talking about that ground crew running out there when Stewart put the right hand up. <laughs> it was really something. Here's the pitch. Swung on a high fly ball, left field. Leon Wagner waiting for it. Coming in now, surrounding it, and makes a two-handed catch, and that's news. <laughs> Joe, tell me about that. I wasn't here. What happened? There's two strikes, and Bob Stewart got his right hand up, and the ground crew, very eager to smooth off the infield, they came busting out of there, you know, about 15 of them, uh -huh. and he got faked right out of their broom. That was a ball, you mean? He, he put his hand up, and then he went to reach for his man. <laughs> and when he did that, you never saw 15 guys make a U-turn quicker in your life. It looked like one of those uh, army drills when you're a recruit. Guys were bumping in each other with brooms. <laughs> Here is Charlie Smith, the strike. You know what it looked like, and I said it the other night. It looked like one of those scenes in those March Brothers movies when the guys are just running around. The Keystone Cops. And then we had another one when he called a ball on Jake Gibbs, and he was the only guy who thought it was a ball. Gibbs thought it was a strike. He ran down the first. Here's the pitch to Smith. It swung on at Smith, and it's strike two. It was the most exciting base on balls I'd ever seen. <laughs> It involved Gibbs, Joe Adcock argued, Ralph hopped through his hands up. He didn't know what was going on. Nobody knew for that matter. On the ballpark, that's the name of the game. Smith smashes one. Backhand is stopped by Alvis. He drops it. Now he throws the first and it's not in time. Max Alvis made a beautiful backhanded play. And he started to throw to second base, dropped the ball, picked it up, and fired across the first. But it was too late, and Charlie Smith has a base hit. So Whitaker is on his second base, Smith is on his first base, and here is Ruben Amaro. Amaro has really been a tremendous hitter for the Yankees. He's got his average up to 288. The Yankees lead one to nothing. Top of the second inning, one man out. Here's the pitch. Bouncing ball, Alvis to his left, deflected just enough to get it into left field. Whitaker will score. Smith stops his second, and Yankees lead two to nothing. It's a base hit for Ruben Amaro off the fingertips of Max Alvis, and the Yankees get a break because Larry Brown was right behind Alvis, and had the ball gotten by Alvis, Brown would have been able to make the play. But Alvis deflected it just enough to get it by Larry Brown in the shallow left field. And it allowed Whitaker to come on around the score. Smith stops his second. Amaro's on his first. Mel Stottlemyre is the hitter. Yankees are leading two to nothing with one man out in the top of the second. Sure, that is amazing the way Ruben is snapping those wrists. He never did that before. It is. It really is. Uh, and it looked like uh, he was uh, pretty much a defensive hitter and he'd lay the bat on the ball, but now he's popping him and he's getting the ball through there. Uh, he's hit the ball hard this whole trip. Stoppelmeyer takes a strike. 
tell you, he's been a most pleasant surprise with the bat. I always thought he could do it with the glove, but with the bat. It's always a thing that they say he's a good fielder but no hit. That hasn't been the case this year. Donald waits, squares around, takes it high. One ball and one strike. He was ready to bunt. Miles had some big base hits for the Yankees. And when you're hitting in an eighth spot, you don't get that many strikes to hit. Orlando Pena starts to loosen up for the Cleveland Indians. And O'Donohue, a left-hander, starts to throw. One ball and one strike. Stottlemyre squares around. Strike is called. So it's one ball, two strikes. Stottlemyre takes a good look at Crosetti. Crosetti really got a nasty whack on the leg. Um, Vidal, last night, broke his bat in half, and the fat part of the bat flew all the way into the Yankee dugout and hit Crosetti on the side of the leg. And boy, he got a big knot there. But he's on the line. Charlie Smith at second base, and Mario at first to pitch. Stottlemyre bunts it beautifully in front of the plate. Sims' his only play is the first base to Whitfield, and the sacrifice is executed perfectly by Mel Stottlemyre on a two-strike count. Charlie Smith on his third base. Ruben Amaro is now on his second base, and the hitter is Horace Clark, who singled the center field to open this game. Yankees lead two to nothing. Ruben Amaro's base hit. He's given the Yankees their second run. It was Amaro who knocked in the winning run last Sunday in Detroit in the eighth inning. It was the game the Yankees won, six to five. Gary Bell, looking in, Clark waiting. Bell, take a look around, here's the pitch. It's a strike, a breaking ball. Up the outside corner, right at the knees. A walk to Whitaker, a base hit by Charlie Smith, a base hit by Ruben Amaro. Two infield hit, hits, actually, Smith and Amaro. They got through there, and there are two runs on the scoreboard for the Yankees. One strike pitch to Horace Clark. Swung on, a bouncing ball. In fast is Gonzalez. Going to be a tough play. Up over to first in time. Nice play by Gonzalez. That ball got over Gary Bell's head, and Gonzalez really had to charge hard. Made the play nicely. Retires his side. The Yankees score one run on two hits. No errors. Two men left. And the score at the end of an inning and a half. It's the New York Yankees. Two, the Cleveland Indians, nothing. Say, let me tell Driving can be a humdrum sort of thing, or it can come alive. The world you drive through is alive. Things are happening all around you. Enjoy them. Atlantic Imperial can help. Atlantic Imperial will clean your carburetor as you drive and keep it clean. Imperial will wash away dirt deposits from the throttle plate area of your carburetor so you won't be distracted by stalling, rough idling, and wasted gasoline. You'll be free to enjoy the dozens of special things every mile of your way. Make your driving come alive. Fill up with Atlantic Imperial, the clean carburetor gasoline. Leading off for the Cleveland Indians, that man again, Fred Whitfield. Whitfield is hitting 235. Stottlemyre delivers. Fastball low. Now they want to look at the ball. The amazing Mr. Whitfield, who has made a career against the Yankees. So far this year is three for 12 lifetime. 61 base hits and 208 times at bat, including 23 home runs and 54 runs batted in. Here's the pitch. Swung on and tapped foul. One ball and one strike. Woodfield, who loves hillbilly music and blinks on a guitar, as he says it. He says not only does it give him enjoyment as far as music, but it strengthens his wrist. 
how can you argue with the guy who's been hitting the way he's been hitting? One one pitch. Foul. Not a play. Upstairs, back downstairs. Salomar is keeping the ball on the outside part of the plate. In the outfield and the infield swung around. Woodfield likes to pull. He can pull anybody. Really get that bat around the hurry. Here's the one-two pitch. Line drive, left field. Fresh moving over. He's there, makes the catch. Stottlemyre hung a curveball, and Whitfield went with it. Fresh had him played perfectly. There's one away, and here is Max Albert. Albert's hitting 234. Five home runs, 20 runs batted in. Breeze is really blown in from center field. Stottlemyre. Line drive by Alvis center field. Pepitone comes in. He's there. That ball was hit right on the button. Joe Pepitone had him played perfectly. And Duke Sims is the hitter. You know, that's demoralizing to a club. I mean, so you and I have both been in this situation where the other clubs, and today, namely the Yankees, are hitting balls that hit off fingertips and sneak in and just barely make it to the outfield, and you come up and you hit two line drives and get them caught, you feel like it's not your day. <laughs> For sure, they were two of the hardest hit balls, I guess, in the whole series. Here is Duke Sims. Fastball is high, ball one. You know, I think he really hit one yesterday, huh? Oh. He hit one the other night, foul. I, I still don't know how that was foul. Upper deck in those light brown seats over there. About a dollar eighty in the cab. Strike to Duke Sims. When he hits home, I've seen a lot of guys hit home runs. Kiner used to hit a high home run. But Mantle, he just floats. Sims, the ball hits his bat. And a strike two, one ball, two strikes. I'm going to have to get some old films and look at when Babe Ruth hit him. Well, they, they ain't sure there are pictures of him hitting the ball, you know, fouling the ball. You never saw the Babe play, did you? Never saw him play. I really didn't. Boy, what a loss. Here's a pitch to Sims, losing back two and two. That's why I think that Hall of Fame at Yankee Stadium is so great, Phil. Uh -huh. To listen to these voices and at least capture that. What a shame that... There aren't more film libraries or more voices of the guys. Kenny Smith is doing that now at the Hall of Fame. Sims uh, takes outside three and two. But at Yankee Stadium, there's some 30 telephones there, and you get a chance to listen to the late Luke Gehrig or Babe Ruth. I think that's great. Because things today really don't mean that much unless you have something to compare it to. Duke Sims had something in his eye. Got it out, and we're going to have baseball. Now Stottlemyre takes a look around. Three balls and two strikes. Here's the pitch. Swung on a foul tip. He really had a cut in a high fastball. Yankees are leading two to nothing. We're in the bottom of the second inning. Duke Sims right down the end of the bat. Stottlemyre gets the sign. Here's the 3-2 pitch. Swung on, smashed up the middle of base hit. Duke Sims singles the center field, makes a big turn at first. Pepitone in with the ball, and it brings up Larry Brown. You know, Joe, with that wind blowing straight in, doesn't make Stottlemyre sink a ball as effective as it normally would with the wind at his back. You know, those pitch kind of pitches, sinker ballers and knuckle ballers like to pitch with the wind against them. Right. Two outs. Pitch to Brown is high. Ball one. Hey, you've become a little bit of a crack meteorologist here. You give us the Lake Erie and are you giving us the crosswind? Hey, you had a couple days off there, but you didn't waste them, did you? No, sir. Quick throw to first, but Sims is back. There's nothing else that'll make him feel good whenever you try to pick a catcher off. <laughs> it really does something. To puff up. 
Brown takes it outside. Two balls, no strikes. You know, to be a little serious about that, it's funny how ball players, when you look at a flag, how it tells you so many things. I don't care what the position is. A knuckleballers and sinkerballers are probably the only two pitchers like to see that wind blown out. Brown takes it over for strike one. Curveball pitchers uh, hate to see the crosswind against them. Uh, infielders constantly looking. Outfielders. Flag is a very important piece of equipment in the ballpark. 2-1 pitch to Larry Brown. Didn't mean to swing. Hits his bat. A foul ball to Charlie Smith. Charlie Smith threw it to Gibbs and almost knocked John Stevens down. He had a duck to get out of the way. You know, they say that Johnny Mize, one of the classic stories, they say that when Mize used to look out of the hotel window at the Edgewater Beach in Chicago, he could tell you how the wind was blowing in Wrigley Field. <laughs> There's a guy made a science of hitting, Joe. Yes, he did. He had the best pair of eyes at home plate I ever saw. He followed ball right into your mitt. Two balls, two strikes. Larry Brown waits the pitch. Fouled off. Count remains at two and two. You follow it into your mitt, and when he swung, you follow it into the seat. Johnny Mine. Some great years. The major leaguer finished up with the Yankees as a great pinch hitter. Mel Stottlemyre. Ready once again. Checks the runner. Sims delivers to Larry Brown. A high fly ball down the line in right field. Drifting over into foul territory. Steve Whitaker cannot get it. Bounces on the roof of the bullpen in right field. And so the count remains at two balls and two strikes. Yankees are leading two to nothing. We're in the bottom half of the second inning, two men out. First two hitters, Whitfield and Alvis, lined out. And then Duke Sims singled up the middle, and Larry Brown has been up there getting his cut. And two and two. Sim standing on the bag at first. Pat Mullen coaches at first. Del Rice coaches at third. Salomire ready. Brown waits the pitch. He has low ball three. Three balls and two strikes. The on deck hitter is Gary Bell, the pitcher. Salomire ready. Checks the runner, Sims. There he goes. Pitch is low ball four. So Larry Brown draws the base on balls. That's the second walk given up by Stottlemyre. It puts Duke Sims at second base. Larry Brown at first base, and the hitter is Gary Bell. Bell is 0 for 13. He's trailing two to nothing. There are two outs in the bottom of the second. Chokes up on the bat. Stottlemyre ready. Delivers. Bell swings and misses. Strike one. Gary Bell. He's been moving from the bullpen to the starting role. The Cleveland club pretty well loaded with pitching. One strike to count. Stottlemyre ready once again. Delivered. Outside. One ball and one strike on Gary Bell. Duke Sims is on his second base. Larry Brown is on his first base. Stottlemyre ready. The pitch outside. Two balls and one strike. Stottlemyre having control problems. He's walked two, but he's been behind a lot of the hitters. Balls in the strike. Sims at second base. Brown at first. Here's the 2 1 pitch now to Gary Bell. Swung on and missed, and it's strike two. Two and two. Bottom of the second inning. Yankees lead two to nothing. 
Bell waits, and here's the 2-2 pitch by Stottlemyre. Swung on and missed. He struck him out. Gary Bell is out on strike. Second strikeout for Stottlemyre. Retires the side. No runs. One hit. No errors. Two men left on base. And the score at the end of two complete innings. It's the New York Yankees two and the Cleveland Indians nothing. Like Cougar Pills. Like Cougar Pills. It's just a special day for any time at all. We take our time to make it a fine day. a little at a time, it's the world's most perfect being. Genuinely sorry there's not enough Kruger Pilsen to go around. We take our time, and we don't do a lot of it. So share your Kruger with friends. Be kind. Because it's perfect baby. It's Kruger Pilsen. Like the stick flavor. That's Kruger Pilsen. G. Kruger Brewing Company, Cranston, Rhode Island. Crash will lead it off in the top half of the third inning. Yankees are leading two to nothing. Crash was out on strikes his first time up. Gary Bell looks in, gets his sign from his big catcher, Duke Sims. And here's the pitch to Tom Crash. It's high, ball one. One ball, no strike. Bell delivers. Trash bunts foul down the third base line. Tom had Max Alvis back. One and one the count on Trash. Gary Bell ready. Here's the pitch. Swung on a high drive down the line in right field. Lee May drifting over in foul territory and can't get it. A foul ball for Tom Tresh. So it's one ball, two strikes. Tresh comes back, and while he makes his way back on New York Yankee baseball, we'll pause for station identification. Snake Yankee baseball brought to you by the G. Kruger Brewing Company of Cranston, Rhode Island. Brewers of light golden Kruger Pilsner. This is WCSS in Amsterdam, New York. One ball, two strikes. Tom Fresh waiting. Gary Bell gets his sign. Yankees lead two to nothing. We're in the top of the third. Here's the pitch by Gary Bell. Swung on a foul ball straight back. One ball, two strikes. Breeze is really whipping it up. Here's the pitch, way outside. Curveball didn't break. Two balls and two strikes. Two-two pitch by Bell. Low, a strike is called. Tom Fresh is called out on strike. A curveball. It caught the inside corner. And Tresh once again out on strike. That's his second strikeout. Here's Mantle. I'll have to admit that time, Phil, I was doing a little bit of rooting and I was hoping it wasn't a strike. Tom has really been in a rut for strikeouts. Yeah, you're right, Joe. And uh, just when you're going that way, everything goes wrong. Here's Mantle. Takes a high ball one. One out. Nobody on. Gary Bell looks in. He's ready. Delivers to Mickey Mantle. Way outside, and it's ball two. Two balls and no strike. Mantle is first time up, trying to bunt for a base hit and was out. Bell to Whitfield. Takes a strike over the outside corner. Two 
two balls and one strike. Here's the 2 1 pitch by Bell. Outside, and it's ball three. Three and one to count. Bell wants to know where the ball was. John Stevens, the plate umpire, motions that it was outside. The favorite weapon of umpires to keep the bench quiet. And the bench starts to holler where the pitches are. Mantle takes it high. Ball four, draws a walk. Puts him on at first. That's the second walk given up by Gary Bell. It brings up Joe Pepitone. When a bench starts to holler where the pitch is, an umpire will usually motion outside or inside because there's no way in the world that the bench can tell. Up or down, they can get in trouble. Because the bench can pretty well judge, but inside or outside, you got them. They want to look at the baseball. We're in the top half of the third inning. One man out. Yankees are leading two to nothing. Gary Bell. Checks Mickey Mantle at first base. Mantle a good lead. Here's the pitch. Swung on a bouncing ball to Whitfield. He throws to Larry Brown for one. Back to first. It's a double play. A 3-6-3. Three, three. And that retires his side. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base. And of course, the end of two and a half innings, it's the New York Yankees two, the Cleveland Indians nothing. You know, by the time you've driven 100 or 200 miles and you're looking for a gasoline station, a lot of dust is beaten against your windshield. Chances are you've collected a few insects, too. So when you pull into a service station for gasoline, that windshield really needs cleaning. But how many times have you driven away and then noticed your windshield was still a mess because you forgot to ask the dealer to clean it for you? Well, if you're one of the thousands of drivers who always look for an Atlantic Red Ball station, I'll answer that question for you. The answer is never, because every Red Ball dealer will clean the windshield, weather permitting, and offer to check the oil for every customer, every time. If not, your gasoline purchase is free. And even though this offer varies in some states, Atlantic Red Ball dealer service never varies. It's always so good, it's guaranteed. When you drive in at the Red Ball sign, you can forget about your windshield, because your Red Ball dealer always remembers. Stottlemyre checks his defense. May bats left-handed. Here's the pitch. Outside, ball one. Stottlemyre thought it was a strike. May walked his first time up. The one old pitch now. Inside. Ball two. Two balls, no strike. Minnesota and Kansas City, nothing, nothing in the second. Two nothing pitch. Strike is called a fastball. Yankees lead two to nothing, bottom half of the third inning. Salomar's pitch is outside. Three and one. May wait. Saddlemeyer delivers. Strike is called on the outside corner. Full count. Three balls, two strikes. Saddlemeyer's walk two. He has allowed two hits. Both singles. One by Hinton, one by Sims. Here's the payoff pitch to Lee May. Swung on. One hopper to Ruben Amaro. He's got it. Over to first in time. Ruben Amaro is right there. Once again, the ball was hit hard. Right at him. And that brings up Gonzalez. Most pitchers will tell you that's their best pitch, the Adam pitch, right at him. And here is Gonzalez, who hit into a double play. His first time up, Gonzalez is hitting a 262.
Settlemeyer ready. Here's the pitch. Swung on a ground ball. Amaro to his left. He's got it over to first in time. Two up and two down. And the hitter is Chuck Hinton, who got a base hit his first time up. And it'll be interesting to see how Stottlemyre works on him because Hinton waited for the curveball to break and then went to the opposite field. Stottlemyre's pitch is a curveball strike. He started it at Hinton. He gave ground. He caught the inside corner. Yankees two, Cleveland nothing. Bottom half of the third inning, nobody on. Two men out, the pitch. Low inside, ball one. One ball, one strike. Here's the one-one pitch. Low, ball two. Two balls in the strike. Hinton deep in the batter's box. Outfield straight away. 2-1 pitch by Stottlemyre. He swung on and hit right back to Stottlemyre on one hop. He's got it, flips the mantle, and Hinton is out. It's 1-2-3 for the Cleveland Indians in the bottom half of the third. And so the score at the end of three complete innings, it's the New York Yankees 2 and the Cleveland Indians nothing. Well, we take a look at the scores, Joe. Boston at Baltimore for a single game. The Orioles are leading 2-1. At the end of three innings, Lon Borg against Bobber, and Frank Robinson homer in the first with one on his 13th of the year leads the Major League. In the first game of a doubleheader, it's Minnesota nothing and Kansas City nothing. Chance against Dobson, that's at the end of three. Washington at Detroit, no score at the end of one. Rickett against McLean. Chicago at California, late at start. In the National League, the Giants and the Dodgers start later on. Pittsburgh leads Cincinnati 1-0 in the 5. Ellis against Sith. The Cardinals lead the Phillies 5-1 at the end of 7. Wise against Carlton. McCarver homered in the 8th inning. And now it's the uh, Cardinals 6 and the Phillies 1. Locke homered in the 5th for the Phillies. Chicago, rather Houston playing at Chicago, postponed because of rain. And the Mets lead Atlanta 5-1, to one, playing the bottom of the seventh is Carroll against Hamilton. Cleve Boyer Holman in the second with one on. Joe Torrey in the fourth, nobody on. And Tommy Davis in the first with two on for the Mets. So that's the score, Joe. We're ready to go. Okay, Phil, here's Whitaker. The first pitch is a fastball outside, ball one. One ball. Now they want to look at the ball. Whitaker walked and scored his first time up. Whitaker opened the second inning, drew the walk, and then after Gibbs fly to the left, Charlie Smith hit one that Alvis couldn't handle. It was first and second, and Amaro hit one that Alvis deflected in the left field, and Whitaker was able to score from second base. 1-0 pitch. Strike is called a breaking ball. One ball, one strike. Nobody on, nobody out. Top of the fourth inning. 2-0 Yankees. Third ball outside. Two balls and a strike to count on Steve Whitaker. Yankees will be leaving for New York after the game. Off day tomorrow. And a big doubleheader with the Twins on Memorial Day. And then Kansas City comes in. Then the Tigers. Whitaker takes Hine outside. It's ball three. And then Washington. And then the White Sox. A lot of baseball coming up. And don't forget, the Yankee ticket office is open right now at the stadium. So if you're riding around, why not stop by? 3-1 pitch is a strike call, a curveball. Take a look at the schedule and pick out the dates for this coming year. Have old-timers day coming up, bat days coming up, ball day. 3-2 pitch. Ball four, Gary Bell walks Whitaker. That's the third walk given up by Bell. It's the second time he's walked Winnaker, and the hitter is Jake Gibbs. Gibbs fly to left his first time up, batting 229. The on-deck hitter, Charlie Smith. Winnaker gets a good lead at first base. 
And swing around, play Jake Gibbs to pull. Bell. Delivered. Swung on a ground ball. Gonzalez at second base has it. Flips to Larry Brown in time to force Whitaker. No return throw. And so there's one away. Gibbs is on at first, and Charlie Smith is the hitter. Smith had the infield hit. His other time up. That was in the second inning. Smith is hitting 223. Yankees are leading two to nothing. Top of the fourth inning. One out and the base runner on at first. There goes the runner. Pitch is taken. Here's the throw. It is in time. Larry Brown made the tag. Jay Gibbs attempting to steal is cut down. From Duke Sims to Larry Brown. Ball one is the count on Charlie Smith. Two away, nobody on. Sims really fired one. He and Askew both have tremendous throwing arms. Here's the 1-0 pitch now. Right down the middle of fastball, strike one. One ball, one strike. Gary Bell against Mel Stottlemyre. Bell delivers to Charlie Smith. Swing and a miss, strike two. Charlie Smith thought it was strike three. He <laughs> sure did. That first pitch was called a ball. He thought it was called a strike. And I don't think he's arguing about it, but he's having a discussion with uh, John Stevens. And it's one ball and two strikes. Kind of a weird one. Here's a foul ball. Straight back. Now remains a one and two. You know what I saw one time, Phil, I was doing the Cardinal games. Wally Moon was with the Cardinals. He hit a ball between first base and the bag, and the umpire motioned his fair, and Wally stopped running and started arguing it was foul. Oh, <laughs> I never saw that before. <laughs> that is one for the book. One ball, two strikes. Way outside, two and two. When he hit the ball, he took about five steps and then stopped, and he thought the ball was foul. And when the umpire kept motioning his fair, because he hadn't been running, he stayed there, and he argued that it was a foul ball. Did he finally go to first? Got thrown out. Oh. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Low outside, ball three. I had another play. I was hitting one day against the Dodgers. Base is loaded. Tapped the ball, front of the plate, thought it was going foul. And stayed there to see if it was going to go foul. And don't you know that Hodges picked it up in fair territory, made a double play out of it? Oh. Foul tip, and Charlie Smith remains alive. I'm standing right at home plate. <laughs> and Hodges just picked the ball up, threw it to Campanella, who was four feet away from him, for the fourth on the guy at the plate. And I'm still watching this. <laughs> and they tagged me. That's a double play. 3 2 pitch to Charlie Smith. Foul tip. Held on to this time by Duke Sims. And that retires the side. Third strikeout for Gary Bell. And so, the score at the end of. Three and a half innings, it's the New York Yankees two, the Cleveland Indians nothing. Should a gentleman offer more than anything to a lady, more than candlelight and small talk, more than just a night? Gentlemen, offer a Tipperillo to a lady. Now that you have Tipperillo regular, a new Tipperillo M with menthol, the question's even tougher. Should a gentleman offer a Tipperillo to a lady? And what if he does? Well, baby, it's all right. Yeah. Tipperillo tonight. Leon Wagner will lead it off for the Cleveland Indians here in the bottom of the fourth. 
You know, it's a funny thing about arguing with umpires. The shortest home run I ever saw involved in an uh, argument. Rocky Nelson, you remember Rocky Nelson? Oh, yeah, very well. He had a low top fly in center field. He was with the Cardinals against the Cubs, and Andy Pasco came in and made a diving catch. And he thought he caught it, but Barlick, the umpire, said he trapped it. And Pasco would not turn loose that ball. He was arguing with Barlick, and while he argued with him, Nelson circled the bases and got a home run. Oh, boy, how stubborn can you be? And they were trying to get the ball out. Give us the ball, Andy, give us the ball. He said, no, I caught it, I caught it. <laughs> Here's the pitch to Wagner. It's a strike. It was really it felt like a tug of war, you know? Like two little kids fighting. He wouldn't give the ball up because he caught it. And old Rocky, he had a home run out of it. Wagner fouls one back. Strike two. How come you never get any weird plays like that? <laughs> Two strikes to count on Leon Wagner. Stottlemyre leads two to nothing. We're in the bottom of the fourth. Here's the pitch by Stottlemyre. Low inside. Ball one. One ball, two strikes. The pitch. Low. Two and two. I don't know if it's just me, but it appears that Stottlemyre is working quite a bit slower than he normally works. He is, Joe. You know, I know Howard, when uh, to slow him down, has to hold the ball a little longer, but he does like to work in a hurry. Here's the 2-2 two -two pitch. Swung on and missed. He struck him out. Wagner is out on strike. That's the third strikeout for Mel Stottlemyre. And it brings up Fred Whitfield. Whitfield lined hard to left field his first time up. Yankees two and the Indians nothing. Bottom of the fourth inning. Stottlemyre delivers. Swing and a miss. Strike one. Whitfield took something off the curveball. Fastball is strike two over the inside corner. Whitfield doesn't believe it. Stottlemyre quickly out in front of Whitfield. He had been falling behind the hitters. Two strike pitch. Did he go around? No, says John Stevens. It's a bad curveball. Jake Gibbs is ready to make the tag. But Whitfield held up in time. They tried to get him to chase a bad curveball. One ball and two strikes, one out, nobody on. Saddlemeyer delivers to Whitfield. Swung on and tapped foul down the first baseline. Pat Mullen comes over. Pat Mullen taking batting practice very seriously, getting ready for Old Timers Day at Yankee Stadium, which is August 19th. There's a date for you if you're riding around and stop off and get your ticket. Used to be the old timers that get there and just go through the motions, but uh, a lot of them are sneaking in secret practices. They want to look good. No, I've been working out with Scooter every day. You're a regular in those things. One, two pitch. Low, two and two. I tell you, the old timers now are getting younger. If I make it any sense out of it. <laughs> sure you do. <laughs> I really don't, but... Yeah. Uh, younger fellows are older. <laughs> There's a ground ball to the second baseman Clark. He slips, throws, but he makes the play. There are two away, and it brings up Max Alvin. Oh, I know what you mean. That the uh, the veterans are not quite as old as the older veterans. <laughs> <used to be. laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> You guys got a regular schedule now. All these yeah. clubs have old timers, and yeah, we'll be in Houston next week. I'll be in New York. I'll be there for a memorable event. Someday, sometime, they're going to have one for my kind of guy. <laughs> Alvis takes it low, ball one. Just bring the guys in. They're going to put us all in the field. And they're going to ask the fans to try to identify us. <laughs> Guess who they are and what they did. Low, ball two. 
And some of us could put our baseball suits on with the equipment and they'd say, oh, I remember him. Yeah, he sold me storm windows once. <laughs> Put you all on watch my line. And <laughs> stump the panel right now. <laughs> Three balls as uh, Stoudemire misses a fastball to Max Alvin. That's a big day, though. This year at the stadium is going to be a memorable event. Oh, they keep getting those hard categories, though. Three nothing pitches right down the middle, strike one. What is your memorable event? Do you know yet? No, I don't know. But you got uh, one. I, well, I don't have one, but I think they'll dream one up. How about you? Didn't you uh, get four hits in one World Series game? I'd be happy to show you the movies of it, Phil. No, oh, but I mean, how many guys have done that? Here's a ground ball. I just know what that event is. I kind of led you on. You did. What well, is it? I know I what your memorable event is. I don't know what it is. And I'll bet you get the adrenaline flowing. What is it? Thank you. He's going to oh. slide into you and knock the ball out of your glove. <laughs> <laughs> that really gets it flowing. He'll never do that again. I wouldn't be dumb enough to have that happen to me twice. He just told me that's what your memorable event. That's a dirty trick. 3-2 <laughs> pitch. Swung on and missed, and Max Alvis is out on strike. 1-2-3 for the Cleveland Indians, and so the score at the end of four complete innings, it's the New York Yankees, two, and the Cleveland Indians, nothing. Yankees in the top of the fifth. Amaro had a base hit to drive in a run in the second inning. Yankees are leading two to nothing. Gary Bell gets the sign. Here's the first pitch to Ruben Amaro. It's a fastball. It's low. Ball one. One ball. No strike. Bell delivers. Inside, ball two, moving back. Bell has walked three. He's allowed two runs, three hits. Two of those three hits came in the second inning. Here's the pitch. High, ball three. Three balls, no strike. The three-nothing pitch by Bell is high, ball four, and Amaro draws the base on ball. That's the fourth walk given up by Bell, and it brings up Stottlemyre, who bunted his first time up. Beautiful bunt, moved the men on. Stottlemyre bunted with two strikes and dropped a beauty. Max Alves at third base has moved way in. If Stottlemyre is going to move his man over, he'll have to have Whitfield field it. Stottlemyre. A foul tip, strike one. Squared around the bunt. Takes a good look at Crosetti. Alves is right in on top of him. There's no way he can bunt the ball to third base and move the man along. Bell with a good high fastball. Got a foul tip strike. Amaro leads off first a good lead. Stottlemyre bunts it down the first base line with foul. And it's strike two. Mel had a two-strike count the first time. And 
punted in front of the plate, and Sims made the play. Yankees are leading two to nothing. We're in the top of the fifth. Nobody out, and Ruben Amaro, who has just drawn a base on balls, is on his first base. Two strikes to count. Bell delivers. Stottlemyre takes it high. Ball one. He had squared around as if to bunt. Both Whitfield and Alvis charging hard. Gary Bell. Hard thrown right hander. Good sinker ball. Gets his sign. Checks the miles. Delivers. Stottlemyre bunts back to Bell. His play will be to first base. Gonzalez covers and Stottlemyre once again with two strikes able to execute the bunt. Gary Bell had some ideas about trying to make a play on uh, Ruben Amaro at second base, but then when he saw that he didn't have a chance, he fired to Gonzalez. So there's one out. Amaro's on at second. Duke Sims is out talking to Gary Bell. And while the conversation goes on, right here on Yankee Baseball, we will pause for station identification. This is WCSS in Amsterdam, New York. You're listening to Yankee Baseball, brought to you in part by the G. Kruger Brewing Company, makers of Kruger Pilsner, the world's most perfect beer. Horace Clark, ready to hit. One man out, base runner at second base, Ruben Amaro. Yankees lead two to nothing in the top half of the fifth inning. Breeze really whipping it up. Here's the pitch. Swung on, a ground ball. Gonzalez at second base has it. Over to Whitfield in plenty of time. Clark is out. Amaro moves on down to third. And that brings up Tom Tresh. Tresh has been out on strike twice. Yankees lead, two to nothing. Yankees scored a run in the first inning. Clark single, stole second, moved to the third base. As Mantle tried to beat out a bunt, Bell threw Mantle out at first. Clark moved to third and then scored on the pass ball. Here's the pitch to Tresh. Low ball one. In the second inning, Whitaker walked. Moved to second as Charlie Smith got an infield hit. Ball that Elvis made a fine backhand play on and dropped it as he started to throw. And then Amaro hit a ball. Elvis deflected it in the left field and Whitaker scored. And that's been all the scoring so far. The 1-0 pitch to Tom Tresh. Swung on and missed. Strike one. He was way out in front. Bell took something off the curveball. One ball, one strike. And there are two outs. Bell delivers. Step foul. And it's strike two. It's apparent how they're working on Trash. They're just showing him the fastball and the hard, fast curveball, or slider. And then they're changing speed. The change of speed pitches are the ones that's thrown for strike. And of course, if you start looking for those, then they'll zip one right on by you. When you're in a slump, you're betwixt and between. Here's the one-two pitch by Bell. Swung on and missed. He struck him out. A bad curveball. And that's the fourth strikeout for Gary Bell. Three times for Tom Tresh. Retires his side. And the score's in the four and a half innings. It's the New York Yankees two and the Cleveland Indians nothing. <laughs> This theme invites you to drive into any Atlantic Red Ball station. Now let me tell you what Atlantic Red Ball service is all about. It's all about you. I only think about my windshield when it's dirty. Since I changed to Red Ball service, I don't have to think about my windshield. And I don't have to remind my Red Ball dealer to check my oil. He's really interested in giving top service. The service, a clean windshield, concern about you and your car. That's what Atlantic Red Ball dealer service is all about. When you drive into a Red Ball station, the dealer will clean your windshield, weather permitting, and offer to check your oil. If he forgets to do either, your gasoline purchase is free. This offer may vary in some states, but never the service. Now that you know what Red Ball service means, drive in and enjoy it. Bottom half 
half of the fifth inning, Duke Sims, Larry Brown, and Gary Bell will be the three hitters for the Cleveland Indians. A two to nothing ball game. Yankees are out in front. Sims had a base hit his first time up. Dottlemeyer. Leading by the score of two to nothing. Delivers the first pitch to Duke Sims. It hits his bat. And it's strike one. One strike to count on Sims. He's out of the batter's box, visiting with the umpire. Stottlemyre ready. Here's the pitch. Swung on and missed. Strike two. Stottlemyre change speed. Stottlemyre has struck out four. Gary Bell has struck out four. Sims, one of these guys on every pitch, backed out of the batter's box. And then back in. Stottlemyre takes off his sign. Now he's ready. Here's the pitch. Hits his back. Count remains a strike two. Yankees two, the Indians nothing. We're in the bottom half of the fifth inning. The two strike pitch. Swung on a line drive. Left field, drifting foul. Now remains a strike two on Duke Stinson. Stottlemyre ready. Two strike pitch. Outside, ball one. One ball, two strikes. The big newspaper is just blown under the field between Mantle and Clark. Time is called. Mantle picks it up, hands it to the umpire. gets an ovation. Swing and a miss, and Duke Sims is out on strike. Five strikeouts for Stottlemyre. One away, and Larry Brown is the hitter. Brown drew a base on balls in the second inning. Stottlemyre has walked two. He walked Lee May to open up the game, and then Larry Brown in the second inning. Here's the pitch by Stottlemyre. Swung on a line drive. Left field. Base hit. Price plays it on the second hop and gets it back into the infield. Larry Brown jumped on the first pitch and really drilled one. A high fastball. Here's Gary Bell. Bell was out on strike the first time up. Yankees lead two to nothing. Bell squares around, misses the bunt. It's strike one. Charlie Smith is in sight. And Bell will try to make Mantle feel the ball if he can. Smith starts to come in. Here's the pitch. Bell bunts it foul. That ball was high and tight. It was a bad ball, and Gary Bell bunted that ball almost in self-defense. It was either bunt the ball or get hit. Two strikes on Gary Bell. On his first base, Larry Brown. There's one man out. Bottom of the fifth inning. Yankees are leading two to nothing. Last game on this road trip. Tuesday, it's the Minnesota Twins, a doubleheader. Wednesday, it's Kansas City. Outside with the curveball, it's one ball, two strikes. Gary Bell once again is squared around as if the bunt. Stottlemyre is a hitter, bunted on two strikes twice. Bunted successfully. Brown and Lee. 
Bell squares around, bunts it back to Stottlemyre. His play will be to first base. Horace Clark covering. Larry Brown moves on down to second base. Stottlemyre started the throw to second base to make a play on Larry Brown and then decided against it. Made sure the one out, Gary Bell. And so Larry Brown is on his second. There are two outs, and Lee May is the hitter. So both pitchers fail to bunt until they get two strikes and then bunt beautifully. And play went. Stottlemyre to Horace Clark is the scoring. Lee May walked in the first inning, bounced out a mile to mantle in the third inning. Stottlemyre checks the runner, delivers. Low ball one, a sinker. One ball, no strike. Two to nothing. Bottom of the fifth, Yankees are out in front. Brown a lead at second base. Pitch by Stottlemyre is a strike called a curveball. One ball, one strike. The outfield shades Lee May towards left center field, even though he is a left-hand hitter. Stottlemyre ready. The one-one pitch is outside. Ball two just missed with the fastball. Two balls and a strike with two outs. Funny thing, in left field, there's a lot of hot dog wrappers that have collected, and they just keep swirling around. The rest of the outfield, clear of everything. 2-1 pitch now to Lee May. Is inside, ball three. Stottlemyre missed with a curveball. Three balls and a strike. Stottlemyre has walked two. He's behind Lee May, three balls and one strike in the bottom of the fifth. Two out. Now Stottlemyre backs off the mound. Started the throw. Ready. 3-1 pitch. Strike is called a fastball on the outside corner. Brown didn't like that call. Three balls, two strikes, two out. Two to nothing, Yankees lead. Bottom of the fifth. Brown a lead at second. Stottlemyre delivers to May. Swung on a foul tip. Count remains full of three and two. Stottlemyre has his time. Checks the runner, Brown is second. Delivers to Lee May. Swung on a line drive. Horace Clark on a short hop has it. Fires to first and just does get him. For some reason, he kept holding the ball. He had trapped it. And finally threw it and made a very close play out of it. But in time. And that's the way to make ground balls exciting, all right. No runs, one hit. No errors. One man left, and the score at the end of five complete innings. It's the New York Yankees, two, and the Cleveland Indians, nothing. Hi, fans. I want you to meet a friend of mine, the White Owl girl. You know, I've been expecting you. Of course. You are finally with a new Tell me something, then. Are there any rules in baseball you'd like to see changed? I think we ought to change the seventh inning stretch. How do you mean? Instead of stretching, everyone likes up a White Owl. A White Owl is more relaxing. Seriously. The tobacco does it. It's aged slowly, mellowed longer. But the seventh inning stretch is a tradition. So are White Owl cigars. You see them everywhere. The stands are filled with them today. Just look around at all the ranges, invincible, and the horses. They're everywhere. Hmm. 
the seven things I know. I think I'll write the commissioner about it today. Just think. All those men at the same time finding out you get a lot more from a white owl than just smoke. We move top of the sixth, and now for the play-by-play, -play, here's Jerry Coleman. Okay, Joe, and the first pitch is to Mickey Mantle, who's up there, facing Gary Bell. Mantle, who bunted in the first inning. First was given credit for a sacrifice, and then it was taken away, so there was just an official at bat, and then he walked in the third. Mantle against Bell. Bell, the right-hander, ready again. The pitch to Mickey. Hit to right field, way back there. Could be it. And it's out of here, number 11 for the Mick. giving the crowd here a real charge as he unloaded over the right field fence at 507 lifetime, his 11th this year, and he trails Frank Robinson by two. Robinson did his 13th for the Orioles in the first inning. So Mantle continues to go. Here's Pepitone. Strike call. Pepitone flying to right field, hit into a double play. Mickey Mantle. Once again, electrifying the crowd here in Cleveland with his 11th home run of the year. He's only four short of tying Mel Ott. A hard ground ball up the middle, base hit by Pepitone. So suddenly here in the sixth inning, a home run by Mantle, a bouncing single by Pepe. And that's hit number five for the Yankees. The Yankees now lead three to nothing. We're in the top of the sixth inning, and here's Steve Whitaker. Cold, breezy day. The sun is out, though. Gary Bell, who has a record of one and three, shooting for a second win, trailing three to nothing. Whitaker pops this one up. Sims can't find it momentarily. The wind has it near the screen, but he's got it now and makes the play. Duke Sims couldn't find the ball momentarily, and then when he got to it, he had plenty of time to get over there and pick it off. So Whitaker fouls out to Sims. Whitaker had walked in his first two trips to the plate, so he's now officially 0 for 1 in the afternoon. Pepitone at first. Yankees leading 3 to nothing. Orlando Pena, a right-hander. John O'Donoghue, a left-hander, warming up. In the Indian bullpen and in the Yankee bullpen, Jim Bouton is throwing. Salomeyer leading 3 nothing. Yankees five base hits. The Indians have three. Gibbs is at the plate and hits the first pitch off his foot, dribbled out toward the mound. Strike one. Gibbs slide to left field in the second, bounce to second in the fourth. Mickey Mantle, the more you think about it, a tremendous story. A year and a half ago in December, he walked into the Yankee offices. Went into then general manager Ralph Hopkins, said, I'm through, I can't play anymore, I can't raise my arm. Finally had a delicate operation. Had no spring training in 66 to speak of and has fought his way back to one of the top players in the American League once again in his 17th year. A tremendous feat by a man who doesn't know how to quit, by a man who's got the drive and pride of a dozen ball players. Mickey Mantle, you'll see him. Memorial Day, Tuesday, the Minnesota Twins, first game at 1 o'clock. There's a 1-1 count now to Jake Gibbs as Bell sets. Here's a pitch, way inside, two balls and one strike. Two and one the count. The Yankees leading three nothing. The Yankees got a run in the first, one in the second, and then Mandel's 11th home run of the year, 507th lifetime. Gary Bell once again comes set. Here's the next one to Gibbs. Hit deep and foul down the right field side. That one lost it into the upper deck. Two balls and two strikes. Gary Bell is only 30 years old, and he's in his 10th year in the big leagues, all with the Indians. He's the kind of a guy that has had a good arm all of his life. Started as a starting pitcher for the Indians, then went to relief, and last year came back in a starting role. He's the kind of a fellow who'll be around, one of those players who'll pitch 20 years or close to it. 
Here's a 2-2 delivery. Gibbs, a dribbler, foul down the first base side. Fred Whitfield at first. Gonzalez at second. Brown at short. Alvis at third. Sims behind the plate. The inner defense for the Indians. In the outfield and left, Leon Wagner. Hinton in center. Lee May in right field. Gary Bell and the Indians trailing the Yankees in this final game of the road trip. Three to nothing. Top of the sixth. Here's the pitch to Gibbs. On the end of the bat, this one into the Yankee dugout. That one off the arm of Ralph Hawkins then bounced back in the field as Ralph tried to not catch it but sort of surround it with his elbow. Two and two of the count. Two balls, two strikes. One away. Set the tone at first base. Indian defense shortened up for a possible DP. Gary Bell, a 2-2 pitch. Ground ball. Whitfield has it on the second bounce. Flips to Brown for one. Back to first, not in time. Fred Whitfield made a nice play to Larry Brown, who got rid of the ball in a hurry, but the ball was hit slowly on two slow hops to Whitfield. And racing down the line to first was Jake Gibbs, eliminating the possibility of the DP. That play went three to six. Two out, and the batter now will be Charlie Smith. Had an infield single in the second, struck out in the fourth. Big month of June. Big baseball month of June at Yankee Stadium. First pitch to Smith. Hits the center field. Way back there. Hinton on the run near the wall, and it's out of here. A home run into a strong wind by Charlie Smith. And you'd have to see it to believe it on a day when the wind is blowing in 20 to 30 miles an hour from dead center. So the Yankees move out in front now, five to nothing. And for Charlie Smith, that's his first home run of the year. RBIs number nine and ten. Here's Ruben Amaro now with two out, a high pop towards third. Alvis, the wind has it, and he drops the ball. It's down to second base, hustling all the way is Ruben Amaro. The wind got that ball and blew it away from Max Alvis. It hit off the fingertips of his glove. And the Yankees have another run here in scoring position. Three runs are in this inning. They're leading five to nothing. And here's Mel Sotomayor. Of course, that will be charged as an error to Max Alvis. He was under the ball, and that strong wind just carried it away from him toward the mound, and he kept reaching and reaching, and the ball dribbled off the end of his fingertips. All the way to second base on the air is Ruben Amaro. Two home runs in this inning, one by Mantle, one by Smith. Sotomayor, who has sacrificed twice, is up there. Bell to Sotomayor, the curve, is over strike one. Charlie Smith... Hit a line drive hard into dead center field over the 408 marker. And on a day like today, he really had to hit it to clear that fence. Not too bad down the lines where the high stands protect the ball a little bit, but into dead center field, with that wind blowing in, it's tough to get it over. There's a swing and a foul back by Salomeyer at strike two. The Yankees five, Indians nothing. Top of the sixth inning. And it's a pattern that the Yankees have had on this road trip. They won the fourth and final game against the Tigers. They won the third and final game against the Orioles. Right now, they're leading 5 to nothing in this third and final game against the Indians. The Indians won the first two. Friday night, 5-4. to four. Last night, check that. Friday night, 4-3. to three. Last night, 5-3. to three. There's a curveball outside to Stottlemyre. Ball one and strike two. Ruben Amaro at second base on the air by the third baseman, Max Alvis. Gary Bell, the right-hander, sets. Here's the pitch, and Sotomayor takes inside. Two balls, two strikes, two and two of the count. Frank Cressetti coaching at third. Lauren Babe coaching at first for the Yanks. Orlando Pena is still throwing 
in the Indian bullpen, as is Jim Bowden in the Yankee bullpen. Here's a 2-2 pitch to Stottlemyre, fouled back on the screen. Mel Stottlemyre, a fine all-around athlete. He can feel his position. And his pitching excellence has already spoken for itself. Also a pretty good hitter. Stottlemyre, 2 for 18 on the season. Has one RBI, batting at 111. But he'll battle you. Wind swirling around here in this big ballpark, the biggest in the American League, biggest in baseball. 2-2 pitch, foul back again, this one going off the mask of the umpire, John Stevens. Doubleheader here in September of 1954, the Indians and the Yankees, that was the year that the Indians set a record for most wins in the 154-game schedule at 111. They beat the Yankees a doubleheader in front of over 86,000 people in this ballpark. There's another foul back against Stottlemyre. Of course, the top crowds ever in baseball were in the Los Angeles Coliseum. And the all-time crowd topper was the one that came to see Roy Campanella being honored. I guess that was back in 1958 at the Los Angeles Coliseum. Over 92,000. Here's a 2-2 pitch to Stottlemyre, and it's strike three call. That's the fifth strikeout for Gary Bell. For the Yankees, though, here in this top of the sixth inning, three runs on three base hits, two of them homers. One error by the Indians, one man left, and the score after five and a half, it's the Yankees five, Cleveland nothing. Like Kruger Pilsner, right Kruger Pilsner, it's just a special beer for any time at all. Oh, we take our time to make it a fine brew, made a little at a time, it's the work goes perfectly. Like Kruger Pilsner, a bright Kruger Pilsner, and your mercy is the taste that's crisp and clear, cause it's perfect beer, it's Kruger Pilsner, a light peppery flavor, Kruger Brewing Company, Cranston, Rhode Island. How do you like that? A swinging blow. Joe, you've been watching Mickey Mantle, I guess as long as he's been playing baseball, and it's an amazing thing, the condition that he's in here in his 17th year of uh, Major League Baseball. It's unbelievable. It's an amazing thing, uh, Jerry, and uh, after you hit the home run, I just fiddled around with some figures, and his start, if you project it, and if he can play 150 games, 11 home runs in the 37 games would be a 45 home run year for him. I'll take it. Won't we? Whoa, oh boy. Here's Gonzalez up there. Fouls the first pitch off, and it's strike one. Pedro Gonzalez hit into a double play in the first and bounced a short in the third. And I guess no one would like to see the mix do it any more than Mickey himself. That tremendous pride and surge in personal achievement that it takes to be a great ball player. Gonzalez, a high chopper foul down the third base side, strike two. You can talk about ability, how well a man can throw, run, field, hit, but you can't really measure what's inside a man until he does it on the field and continues to do it year after year after year. What keeps him coming back? The two-strike pitch to Gonzalez, popped up, right side, Mantle, near the railing, can't get to it. And Arnold Palmer in golf. He doesn't play for money anymore. He just plays to win. What keeps him going? Or a Mickey Mantle, or a Ted Williams, or a DiMaggio, or Willie Mays. You can go on and on. The great football players, all of them. The pride, the drive. Remarkable things because after a few years, all the mountains have been climbed. But they keep going, and it's something inside that keeps pushing them. The two-strike pitch now to Gonzalez is outside. One ball and two strikes. The Yankees returning to the stadium Memorial Day, May the 30th, against the Twins, a doubleheader, first game at 1 o'clock. The 1-2 pitch. 
strike three called and for Stottlemyre that's number six Gonzalez argued on that one but to no avail so while we have a moment this is New York Yankee baseball we pause for station identification light golden Kruger Pilsner made a little at a time by the people at G. Kruger Brewing Company of Cranston, Rhode Island who take their time this is WCSS in Amsterdam, New York Chuck Hinton coming on now. Single to right field. Tap back to the pitcher. One for two. Right-hand batter facing the right-handed Stottlemyre. Ground ball. Nice play by Amaro on a tough half hop. Over to Mantle. Two down. The Yankees really rolling today. And it's amazing the difference that a few hits can make to a ball club. You can see it in the whole action of the team itself. Two outs now, nobody on. Yankees leading 5 0, bottom of the sixth, and here's Daddy Wags, Leon Wagner, struck out twice. Once in the first, again in the fourth. Stottlemyre delivers a dribbler down the first base side and toward the Indian dugout. Mel Stottlemyre has given up only three hits one in the first, one in the second, and one in the fifth. Walked two men and struck out six. He leads. Five to nothing. Mantle with his 11th home run, 507th lifetime. High pop, left side behind third. Amaro and Smith. The win has this one, and Smith backs up, moves into the fair part of the field, and makes the play. So it's three up and three down, and the score after six full innings of play. The Yankees five runs, six hits. The Indians no runs on three. And now here's Joe with a scoreboard, and keep you up to date on the action. At the end of six, it's the Boston Red Sox, three, and the Baltimore Orioles, two. Petroselli a home run, the fourth, nobody on. Frank Robinson, in his 13th of the year, leads the major leagues. That came in the first with one man on. Lundborg against Barber, Boston three, Baltimore two, end of six. Minnesota, first game with doubleheader, one. Kansas City, nothing. Chance against Dobson. Washington, nothing. Detroit, nothing. Bottom of the fifth, Rickard against McLean. Chicago will use Bizarre McLaughlin as a pitcher for California. Los Angeles, it's Austin. Perry is pitching for the Giants. Cincinnati, two. Pittsburgh, two. Bottom of the eighth. Not a board against fifth. Not a board it's in relief. Clemente, home run the sixth. Nobody on. St. Louis, eight. Philadelphia, three. A final score. Carlton was the winner. Jackson was the loser. McCarver, home run the eighth. Nobody on. Lock in the fifth. Nobody on. Houston and Chicago, postponed because of rain. The Mets, six. Atlanta, three. Final score. The winner was Dennehy. The loser was Jarvis. Cleve Boyer, home run the second, one on. Joe Torrey in the fourth, nobody on. Tommy Davis in the first with two on. That's the first game of a doubleheader. In the second game, it's LeMaster for the Atlanta Braves. And Jack LeMay will be the pitcher for the New York Mets. That's the look at the scoreboard. The new pitcher here for the Cleveland Indians is Orlando Pena. And the score, five to nothing. Yankees are out in front. We move into the top of the seventh. Jerry? Okay, Joe, Pena has come on, and he has no record, hasn't won, hasn't lost. This is his fifth appearance, and he's pitched only four innings this year. In those four innings, he's given up three hits and has allowed no run, so his earned run average is 0-0-0. Struck out a couple of men, given up a couple of bases on balls. Orlando Pena is in there for Gary Bell as we go into the top of the seventh inning with the Yankees leading 5-0. It'll be Horace Park, Tommy Tresh, and Mickey Mantle coming on for the Yanks. Yankees got a run in the first, one in the second, and three in the sixth. In the sixth inning, Mickey opened it with his 11th home run, 507th lifetime, then Pepitone singled, and after two are down, Smith hit a home run over the center field wall. Horace Clark, a check swing foul, moving back toward the railing, and it's strike one. Clark in the ball game, a single to right, and bounced to second twice. One for three. Orlando Pena, a deliberate worker. Sort of a lean, wiry type ball player. Foul back by Clark, strike two, nothing and two. Forget the Minnesota Twins, Memorial Day. Tuesday afternoon, first game at 1. Kansas City at 8 o'clock. Wednesday night for a single date. You get a look at those white shoes. Big weekend set. Friday night the 2nd. Ladies' Day, Charm Day, Senior Citizens Day. Saturday afternoon the 3rd. And a sunny doubleheader all against the Detroit Tigers. There's a fastball low and outside. One ball, two strikes. 
Benedict's in town for five games in four dates, all at night. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and it's a twinighter on Wednesday evening. Fastball outside now to Clark. Two balls and two strikes. And then another big weekend set. Friday night, June the 9th. Ladies' Day, Saturday afternoon the 10th. And a Sunday doubleheader and that day on June the 11th. And that's against the front-running Chicago White Sox. Curveball fouled back right here. Count holds two balls and two strikes. All you youngsters, 14 years of age and under, male or female, a free Little League bat will be given out on June the 11th. Doubleheader against the league-leading Chicago White Sox. What a doubleheader that is. Bats and baseball. Orlando Pena into the windup. Here's the 2-2 pitch to Clark. High pop near the plate. Sims going out. Alb is coming in. Sims is calling for it and makes the play in fair territory. Well, there is one away here in the top of the seventh. Continuing the big month of June, the 19th, 20th, and 21st, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday nights, the Red Sox are in. Canigliero should be out of the service by then, so you get a look at him. Yastrzemski, George Scott, Joe Foy. The young Red Sox in town. And then another big weekend set, Friday night, Saturday night, single game on Sunday, 23, 4, and 5 against the Tigers. There's a fastball. It's High and inside, ball one to Tommy Tresh, who struck out three times today. Tresh having a bad day. He's got that bad right leg. Got a bad knee, a bad ankle, and a bad instep. High and outside, two and over the count. Two balls and no strikes. So a weekend set twice with the Tigers. June 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. 23rd, 24th, and 25th. The weekend set with the White Sox. 9th, 10th, and 11th. And that day is the 11th. Tresh takes inside, 3-0. Oh. So the Yankees leading in this ball game, 5 to nothing. We're in the top of the seventh inning, one out. Tresh at the plate, Mantle on deck. Orlando Pena ready again. Here's a pitch to Tommy, and it's in there. Three and one, three balls and one strike. Don't forget the new bus service that's being inaugurated on the night of June the 2nd from the lower level of the George Washington Bridge. That's 178th Street and Broadway. Buses leaving two hours and one hour before game time and returning up to 20 minutes after each game from behind gate two at the stadium. There's a foul back. Three and two. Three balls and two strikes. Youngsters under 12 travel free accompanied by an adult and a one-way trip is 90 cents. So another convenience being administered by the Yankees to their patrons here in 1967. If you haven't been out to see this new ballpark, Yankee Stadium repainted, refurbished, Hall of Fame in Section 6. A lot of things happening at the ballpark this year. Here's the payoff pitch. Trash hits one center field, not too deep. Hinton is gauging it, he's under it, and he's got it. So there are two down. Now the fans starting to murmur here as Mickey comes on. is the only ball player who has cheered in every park in the American League. You know, of course, when you go into these opposition parks, they're partisan fans. They're rooting for the home team. But with Mickey, he belongs to everybody. He belongs to baseball. Two out. Mantle at the plate. Pena into the windup. Here's the first pitch to Mickey, and it's out. No, it's on the outside corner, strike one. You know, you can be a pretty bad umpire from up here, but looks outside. Isn't. The one strike delivery now. Check swing foul. Strike two. No balls and two strikes. There's a shadow at home plate, and that'll be creeping out toward the mound. Mickey in the shadow. The sun starting about a foot and a half in front of the plate. Won't affect the hitter now, but in about an inning or two, it, it may have some effect. Yankees five, Cleveland nothing, top of the seventh. Two outs. A two-strike count to Mickey. Defense shifted to the right side. Here's Pena, the spidery right-hander, delivers, and Mickey takes low. One ball and two strikes. Mantle on an attempted bunt. He bounced out to the pitcher in the first inning. Walked in the third. Hit his 11th home run of the year in the sixth. 
trails Frank Robinson by two. Robinson had his 13th today. Mantle bearing down. You can just see him concentrating. Here it is. The one-two delivery. Swung on a missed strike three, and he got him. So Pena gets his first strikeout. It's three up and three down for the Yankees here in the seventh. And the score after six and a half. Yankees five, and the Indians nothing. first baseman Mike Keegan and the next time we come to Cleveland and the wind is blowing in I'm bringing hammer and nail because I can't hold anything down oh, it's really blowing in. Mike Keegan the son of the bullpen coach for the Yankees Jim Hegan who also one of the all-time great catchers right here in this ballpark for the Cleveland Indians for many years Mike Hegan playing at first base from Mickey Mantle Coming on now is Fred Whitfield, Max Alvis, and Duke Sims going into the bottom of the seventh. First ball fouled back, Stottlemyre with that good sinker today. Boy, he lost a tough one in Baltimore the other night, losing the ball game one to nothing. Right now, though, he's got five big runs on the right side of the ledger as far as he's concerned tonight. Five to nothing game, Yanks leading the Indians, bottom of the seventh. Stottlemyre again delivers. Whitfield swings and misses. Strike two. Fred Whitfield, so far in the ball game, line to left, bounce to second. Yeah, that's a moral victory, the way this fella hits Yankee pitching. Got 23 home runs against the Yankees. High fly ball, left center field. Moving in for the kill is Tommy Trash. He's under it and he's got it. The wind is playing tricks on all balls that are hit high in the air, whether they're in the infield or the outfield. Line drives not too much, but a ball hit high in the air really held up. Here's Max Alvis, who flies to center and then struck out. Yankee five, Indians nothing. Stottlemyre ready. Here's the pitch to Alvis. A half swing that's taken for a ball. Started to go and then held back. Red Sox leading the Orioles 4-2 after 7. Minnesota out in front of Kansas City 1-0 after 6. First game of the pair. Washington and Detroit scoreless after 5. Strike right in there to Max Alvis. One ball, one strike. Chicago and California later start. Mets beat the Braves in the first game of a doubleheader. 6-3. Second game hasn't started as yet. Cardinals beat the Phillies 8-3 in a singleton. Pittsburgh 3, Cincinnati 2 after 8. Houston at Chicago postponed. High fly, short right field. Whitaker back, now drifting to his left. is under it and has it. Almost fell down as he tried to come in again. And the other game in the National League, the Dodgers and the Giants playing in San Francisco this afternoon, a single game, and that'll be a later start. The sign has just gone on the board that the Braves have scored a pair in the top of the first inning against the Mets, and it's 2 to nothing Atlanta over New York after one. All right, Stottlemyre to Duke Sims. Ground ball to Amaro at short. Scoops it up. Flips to Hegan. And a very easy inning for Mel Stottlemyre. Three up and three down. The score after seven full innings of play, it's the Yankees five and the Indians nothing. Should a gentleman offer More than an evening to a lady More than candlelight and 
small town, more than just a night. Should a gentleman offer a tip of gentlemen offer a Tipperillo to a lady. Now that you have Tipperillo regular, a new Tipperillo M with menthol, the quest is even tougher. Should a gentleman offer a Tipperillo to a lady? And what if he does? Well, baby, it's all right, yeah. Okay, we're all set to go here. Top of the eighth inning. It'll be Pepitone, Whitaker, and Gibbs facing Orlando Pena, who came off for Gary Bell. But Bell started the ball game, went the first six innings, gave up six hits, walked four, struck out five, and allowed five runs. Pena came on on the seventh and retired the side in order. Here's the paid attendance. 15,000. 197. 15197. Paid attendance for the single game between the Yanks and the Indians here in Municipal Stadium in Cleveland. Fastball to Pepitone is way outside. It's ball one. Yankees leading 5 0. 12,680 yesterday evening. Over 11,000 on Friday night. A two hopper to Gonzalez at second base. Flips the quick field and Pepitone is out of there. So Joe Pepitone, who was one for three, now goes one for four. Play going four to three. Here's Steve Whitaker. Walks twice, foul to the catcher. 0 for 1. Whitaker and Pepitone have both been picking up with the bat. And that's good news to manager Ralph House. Hitting has been one of the big problems for the Yankees this year. There's a drive down the right field side. Hooking foul. That ball. A sinking line drive. Foul about 10 feet. Steve Whitaker way out in front of it. Yankees leading 5-0. Last game of this long road trip. We saw the Yankees going to Detroit, Baltimore, and now to Cleveland. Sunny skies, windy, breezy weather. Pena to Whitaker, a sinker, swings and misses, strike two. Orlando Pena, one of the many ball players who's being accused of loading them up from time to time. Anytime there's a sinker, everybody looks around and says, that's it. Here's a two-strike pitch now to Whitaker. Swing and a miss, strike three. Well, Pena has struck out his second man since coming on in the seventh inning. That's the seventh Yankee that has struck out in this ball game. And now here's Jake Gibbs, who fly to left, bounced to second, and then bounced to first. Scored a run in the sixth inning. When he bounced to first, he forced Pepitz on his second and then came around on Smith's home run over the center field fence. Pena into the windup. The pitch to Gibbs is low. Ball one. Yankees, five runs, six hits. Indians, no runs on three. Orlando Pena again. Here's the pitch, and this one gets away from the catcher. Sims, it's low. It's 2-0. Two, oh. two balls and no strikes. Jake Gibbs and Ellie Howard sharing the catching job here for the Yankees this season. Big Joe Adcock in his freshman year with the Braves from Lake Erie, the Cleveland Indians. Quite a guy, that Adcock. Dedicated ball player all the way. Here's the 2-0 pitch now to Gibbs, and it's inside 3-0. Oh. You know, I watched Joe Adcock during batting practice. He's up there giving an instruction to his ball players while they're hitting. Always with a little note, a little aside here and there to help them out if he can. Fastball is in there. Strike one. Three balls, one strike. Two outs, nobody on. Eighth inning, Yankees leading by five. A five to nothing ball game. Pena in relief of Gary Bell. Ready again. The spidery right-hander delivers. And this one swung on a miss. Strike two. And he's got a good fastball for a little guy. 
Orlando Pena is taller than Bobby Shan, but built along the same lines. Very lean and wiry. Bet he doesn't weigh 150 pounds. Three balls, two strikes. Two outs, nobody on. Gibbs at the plate. Pena getting the sign from Sims. He's ready. Into the windup, and the payoff pitch to Jake is fouled back on the screen. 15,197 here today. Don't forget June the 11th. It'll be a Sunday doubleheader with the White Sox that day at the stadium. If you're 14 years of age and under, a free little league bat accompanied by an adult. The payoff pitch again to Gibbs. Two hopper to Gonzalez at second. He's got it. Flips to Whitfield and the side is retired. So another easy inning for Pena. He's retired six men in a row over the last two. Three up and three down. And the score after seven and a half. Yanks five, Indians nothing. Here's the beer, I care. Henry said he wanted some cougar children. So does my family. Uh-oh, there's just one six-pack left. So how do we settle it? Well, I know, Clara. Suppose I flip you for the cougar pills now. Okay. Yeah! Sorry, Clara. But it is cougar pills <laughs> More and more people are starting to flip for Kruger Pilsner. But we just can't get ourselves to make more and more of our beer. We'd rather brew a small amount of perfect beer and brew a lot of beer that's merely good. We do make perfect beer. And sometimes it is a bit hard to find. So please, share your Kruger Pilsner with your friends. Be kind. Larry Brown and Orlando Pena, along with Lee May, the scheduled three hitters to face Mel Salomire, undoubtedly will have a pinch hitter coming on for Pena here in the bottom of the eighth inning with the Yankees leading 5-0. You know, Joe, one thing that has always puzzled me, size never dictates the strength of the arm of the ball player. Little guys with great arms, big guys with great arms, and has anybody been ever or able to pin it down just what it takes to throw? I don't think anybody's been able to pin it down, but it's, it's so true. You've seen, uh, I can think of guys, guys with great, look at Petroselli, he's not a big guy, and he's got a gun. Well, a little Bobby Shan, senior with a good arm, Willie Miranda, who is a little guy. And you see some big guys who can throw and some big guys who can't. No one has been able to pin it down as it just why some people can and others can't. You can't practice it. Either there or it isn't there. Here's the one strike pitch to Brown, and it's on the outside corner, strike two. We're in the bottom of the eighth inning. Yankees leading 5 0. Larry Brown, who has walked and singled, facing Mel Sotomayor. Sotomayor has given up only three base hits. Mel ready again. Here's the pitch to Brown. Way outside, gets by Gibbs. One ball, two strikes. Some final scores in the National League. Mets beat the Braves in the first game 6-3. Cardinals beat the Phillies 8-3 in a single game. Pittsburgh 3 and Cincinnati 2. So Cincinnati leading the league, taking it on the chin again. And that's the final score. L.A. at San Francisco later start. Houston at Chicago postponed. Swing and a miss. And Brown is out of there. And that's strikeout number 7 for Stottlemyre. Mel Sharp today. That was a sidearm curveball. In the second game between the Mets and the Braves, Braves leading the Mets 2-0 after 1. Over in the American League, Boston leads Baltimore 4-2 after 7. Minnesota now leading Kansas City 4-0 after 6.5. That's the first of a doubleheader. Dean Chance shooting for his eighth win of the year in that one. Washington and Detroit scoreless after 5.5. Chicago failed to score in the top of the first. California batting in the bottom of the first. Right here, Yankees leading 5-0. And now here is Jose Vidal, who almost took Frank Cressetti's leg off with a bloop single into center field, but the bat went into the dugout. And there goes the bat again over the dugout. And I don't know if it hit anybody. And apparently it didn't, but my Lord, it got somebody in the arm. He let go of that bat. 
And I no sooner got the words out of my mouth than there it went. Only this time, the entire bat went. Yesterday, Vidal swung at a ball, and the bat was sawed in half and spun into the Yankee dugout as though it was heaved in there. And now this one, he took one swing, and it flew over the Yankee dugout, and apparently hit a man in the left shoulder, but... Boy, oh boy, I tell you, Joe, it's lucky somebody didn't get their head knocked off. Yes, it is. Very fortunate, Jerry. Uh, all the Yankee players taking a look. Uh, here, some folks just can't hold a bat. Oliva's like that. The late Pepper Martin used to be like that. Uh, I don't care if they use pine tar, rosin, or what. Almost they have to hit with a, a chain on the bat that when it slips out, they just drag it back. They and the bat might go in then. <laughs> yeah. All right, here's Stolomire to Vidal, way outside. One ball and two strikes. How about the guy who's got the bat? He just kept it, and uh, rightly so. And uh, he's going to go home and say, yeah, I went to the game. I caught a bat. <laughs> Here's the swing and a miss, strike three. <laughs> I'll tell you, that's not an everyday occurrence. That's the eighth strikeout for Stolomire. Two up and two down here in the bottom of the eighth inning. <laughs> Listen, we used to have a catcher over Pittsburgh, Nick Kobach. He used to do that on bunt plays a lot. As soon as a batter would throw the bat back, he'd catch the bat. You know, Minosa was a great one for unloading on that bat. Mm -hmm. He gave away 100 or so in his career. Lee May takes a strike right in there from Stottlemyre. Yankees leading 5-0. What does a bat cost? That's about five bucks a whack, isn't it? Uh, I guess a lot they buy. About three and a half. You get them cut rated. If you order yeah, enough, huh? you order enough. Get them wholesale. Well, you get to keep the balls that bounce in the stand, but I guess when a bat goes in there, too, it'd be tough to take it away from somebody that got it. A one and one account. One ball and one strike to Lee May. It was walked, bounced a short, bounced a second. Let's have him bat there the hard way. You can have it much easier on the 11th. You said it. A strike is called on May. We're in the bottom of the eighth inning. It's one ball, two strikes, two outs, and nobody on. Yankees out in front, 5 nothing. Stottlemyre pitching another one of his masterpieces, and he can do it when he's sharp. Here's the one-two pitch. Sinker way outside. In fact, Stottlemyre looks faster and sharper right now than he did in the early going in the ballgame. First two innings was a little erratic, but now he has settled down, and he is really sharp from the third inning on, giving up only one base hit. There's a drive down the right field side, hooking foul. Lee May... Out in front of a pitch by Mel Stottlemyre. Gary Bell started the ball game for the Indians. Went six innings, gave up six hits and five runs. Pena came on, went two innings. Struck out two, did not allow a hit. We'll have another pitcher coming on here in the ninth. There's a high drive way back there, right field, near the barrier. It's Whitaker. Jumps. Did he get it? He got it. Right at the wall. Steve Whitaker robs Lee May of what would have been a home run and a shutout breaking hole run. So for the Indians, three up and three down, and the score after eight, it's the Yanks five, Cleveland nothing. Hey, up ahead over in the pasture, look at the Colts folly. Drive around that corner and you'll see a wonderful old windmill. And over there, some kids are playing ball. Atlantic Imperial. The clean carburetor gasoline keeps your car on the go and more. Imperial washes away harmful dirt deposits from your carburetor throttle plate area as you drive. Vacation journey driving to work, or simply off to the neighborhood store. Every trip becomes a little more pleasant when you use Atlantic Imperial. The clean carburetor gasoline. The third Indian pitcher is George Raymond Culver, born in Salinas, California. Grow a lot of lettuce out that way. And he was drafted from the Yankee organization. While we wait for him to warm up, we remind you this is New York Yankee baseball. We pause for station identification. Yankee baseball on WCSS Amsterdam, New York, being brought to you in part by the G. Kruger Brewing Company of Cranston, Rhode Island. 
The brewers of light golden Kruger Pilsner will never be able to say they brew the most. They don't mind as long as they brew the best. Joe, how often... Well, no, let me put it this way. Did you like to bat off young pitchers? Uh, if I didn't see them warm up, I, I didn't mind it. But if I saw them warm up and they were wild, I wasn't all choked up about it. You know, I'll tell you, young pitchers never interested me much. I like to give them two or three years before I got around to hitting off them. There's a swing and a miss by Charlie Smith. You know, I think Whitey Ford's got the best idea. It, it's in reverse about young hitters. He says they're tougher to get out because they think a slider is a curveball that don't break. They think a change of pace is a lousy fastball, and they keep hitting you. <laughs> well, Whitey was a lousy exhibition pitcher when it came to pitching against minor league ball clubs. Really, I tell you, he, he had some unbelievably bad records against those kids. Well, they didn't, uh, they didn't know what he was trying to do, and they weren't looking for anything. And as I say, like a good slider to them is a bad curveball. All right, Culver to Charlie Smith. Fouls this one back on the screen. One and two. They weren't smart enough to get fooled is the whole thing. And, of course, the other great thing, too, Jerry, is that a guy like Whitey Ford, uh, one, he not only has to know your weakness, uh, he's got to probe him and put the ball there. And if he doesn't know your weakness, he's got to find it. And when you start uh, making pitches to set up other ones, some of these minor leaguers will whack them. You know, there's another thing, too, about Whitey, and I think it's true of some other ball players. They can't get excited about pitching against a minor league group or even an exhibition game. They do their best work when the chips are down, the big crowds, and everything's on the line. The adrenaline flows. Okay, it's a 1-2 count to Charlie Smith. Top of the ninth inning. Yankees leading 5 nothing. George Culver, 23-year-old right-hander. Into the windup. Here's the pitch to Smith, and it's fouled back on the screen once again, and the count holds at 1 and 2. See, George Culver, 6'2", 182 pounds, makes his home in Oildale, California. O-I-L-D-A-L-E. That's a new one. Never heard of that. He was 14 and 10 last year with Portland, 0 and 2 of the Indians. Culver, the right hand there to Smith. The curve ball way up there. Two balls, two strikes. Culver began his pro career back in 1963. This is his fifth year in professional baseball. The right-hander again to Smith. Ground ball in the hole, and Charlie Smith is having himself a day. Three for four, two singles, and a two-run homer, and a leadoff single here in the top of the ninth inning. That's the seventh Yankee hit in the ball game. They're leading 5 nothing, and that'll bring up Ruben Amaro, who singled, walked, safe one an error. At first base, Charlie Smith, Ruben Amaro at the plate. On deck, Stottlemyre. Culver ready. Set, here's a pitch to Amaro. Strike called. Wind has been blowing dead in from center field rather briskly and strongly through most of the ball game. I wish you could see the outfield playing against Amaro. About as shallow as you can get and still be called outfield. Foul back. Strike two. Nothing and two to the count. No balls and two strikes. Ruben Amaro, who is one for two, came into the game batting at 288, so he should be a little above 290 right now, or right at 290. Top average hitter for the Yankees thus far. Amaro turning it in at shortstop and doing it with the bat as well. Smith moving off first. Culver sets. Here's a pitch to Ruben, and it's a curve outside. One ball, two strikes. One and two to count. Tigers have come up with three in the bottom of the sixth to lead the Senators 3 nothing. Rickert relieved by Baldwin in the sixth. McLean for Detroit. Chicago and California scoreless after an inning and a half. High fly ball behind second base. Gonzalez backing up. Now the ball is being taken away from him, and right there to take it. Ten feet behind the grass at second base is the right fielder, Lee May. That's how shallow he was playing. Boston, four. Baltimore, two. Orioles batting, bottom of the eighth. Minnesota leading Kansas City four to nothing after seven, first of a doubleheader. National League, Dodgers and the Giants going at it in San Francisco on the West Coast later start. Pittsburgh big Cincinnati 3-2. Cardinals over the Phillies 8-3. Houston at Chicago postponed rain. Now Culver to Stottlemyre. Squares around, takes one low, ball one. He was going to sacrifice. First game of a doubleheader. The Mets beat the Braves 6-3 in the second game. 
Braves lead the Mets two to nothing with the Mets batting in the bottom of the second. Right here, it's Yankees five, Indians nothing. Stottlemyre squares and misses this one as he fouls it back a little. One ball and one strike. Just got a piece of it. One ball, one strike. At first base, Charlie Smith, one away. Stottlemyre, who has sacrificed twice and struck out at the plate. Top of the ninth inning, the Yankees out in front by five. George Culver, 23-year-old right-hander, sets. Here's a pitch. Stottlemyre fouls this one off. And it's strike two. In the second inning and again in the fifth, Stottlemyre went up there to bunt and didn't lay the ball down until he had two strikes on him. In other words, he tried both times but was not successful. But after two strikes, he did come up with a successful bunt. So let's see if he can do it three times. Charlie Smith moving off first. Culver, the right-hander set. Stottlemyre squaring around and <laughs> almost hit him. He ducked away from it. Two balls and two strikes. Two and two to count. Yankees returning to the stadium. Tuesday, one o'clock, doubleheader against the Minnesota Twins. Memorial Day, May the 30th. The 2-2 two -two pitch, and Stottlemyre had to duck away as the ball hit his bat. That's a foul ball. And wait a minute. It looks as though they're calling Stottlemyre out on the attempted fun as he tried to get away from the ball, and Steven says he's out of there. Stottlemyre was trying to duck away, and Mel slams the bat down. But John Stevens says, nope, that's strike three. And it looked from here as though Stottlemyre was merely trying to get away from the ball and was not trying to bunt at it. Well, if you bunt foul on a third strike, you're automatically out. And John Stevens, the plate umpire, has ruled this as an, an intentional bunt foul on the third strike. You know what that's like? That's like throwing a player out for thinking. Well, he didn't have any fun. He was thinking about fun and hit his bat. He was trying to get out of the way of the ball, and it did hit the bat. And he was drawing the bat away from the bunt attempt, but the umpire behind the plate has the final say. Two outs now, and here's Horace Clark, who takes the strike. Clark, one for four, singled in the first inning, stole second, scored on a pass ball. The Yankees are leading, five to nothing, top of the ninth. Two outs, Charlie Smith at first. Ground ball in, no, oh, nice play by Gonzalez behind first base. What a play by Pedro. And on that one, I was about to say ground ball in the whole base hit, and Gonzalez came from nowhere to rob Horace Park. Play going 4-3, a fine play. No runs, one hit, one man left, and the score after eight and a half. Yankees five, Indians nothing. There's no doubt about it, a certain tension starts growing in the stands when a game goes into extra innings. And that's also the time when a certain thirst starts to grow right here in the broadcaster's booth. A thirst for the perfect taste of Kruger Pilsner beer. Granted, a Kruger Pilsner tastes especially good when you're hot and tired and your throat is dry. But Kruger Pilsner has a distinctive, extra light taste that goes great at any time. That's because Kruger Pilsner is made in a special way, in small amounts, by people who simply refuse to be hurt. That's the only way you can maintain the highest standard of quality control. And that's what the Kruger people insist on. It's not a matter of just making sure that everything is all right. It's making sure that everything is perfect. With Kruger Pilsner, you can tell it in the taste. It's the world's most perfect beer. If you haven't tried Kruger Pilsner, do it soon. And if your store is temporarily out of Kruger, please be patient. The Kruger people will do their best to send some your way soon. that doubleheader on Memorial Day, the pitchers, as we have them scheduled right here, will be Boswell and Merrick for the Twins, Peterson and Downing for the Yankees. First game at 1 o'clock. And in between the game, Joe Pepitone will get the Rawlings Gold Glove Award as the best American League fielding first baseman in 1966. And, Joseph, you're emceeing that one, pal. <laughs> it's a case of introducing Pepitone to the fans and introducing Pepitone to the fans has got to be probably the easiest job in the world. Vic Davalio is coming on here in the bottom of the ninth inning to bat for Pedro Gonzalez. The little guy holds the bat on the end facing Stoudemire and a first ball is a shot to Ruben Amaro. 
And the plate umpire called Davileo out, although Amaro threw the ball to first just in case. But Stevens raised his hand. You can see it from here. It might have been hard for Valentine at third and Stewart at first, but Joseph, that's one that I saw all the way. <laughs> yes, you did, Jerry. You know, some of these games at night when you get up here, you're not really sure, but that one you can see easily. Here's Chuck Kenton now, one for three. Swings and misses, and it's strike one. Say one thing, that Davileo really pickled that ball. It was a bullet, a low-line drive that Amaro scooped up just before it hit the dirt. Dottemeyer to Hinton, backs him off the plate, one ball, one strike. After eight, Boston leads Baltimore four to three. Minnesota leading Kansas City four to nothing after seven, first of a doubleheader. Stottlemyre to Hinton, low. Detroit, three. Senators, nothing after six. Chicago and California, scoreless after two on the West Coast. Chuck Hinton, two balls and a strike. Stottlemyre again, and it's outside. Three and one. In the National League, the Giants came up with three in the top of the first to lead the Dodgers, three nothing. Pittsburgh beat Cincinnati, three to two. Cardinals beat the Phillies, eight to three. Stottlemyre, a two-hopper in the hole into left field. Base hit by Chuck Hinton. That's the first hit since the fifth inning off Stottlemyre. Second for Hinton. Stottlemyre has given up only four hits. Two of them to Chuck Hinton. Mets beat the Braves in the first game 6-3, to three, and they trail 2 to nothing after two of the second. Houston at Chicago rained out. And right here, it's the Yankees 5, the Indians nothing, bottom of the ninth. A one-out single by Chuck Hinton brings Leon Wagner to the plate, and he takes it in there, strike one, taking all the way. Dottlemeyer shooting for his fourth win. If he can win it, it'll put him at 500. Four wins, four losses. Gary Bell started for the Indians. Pitch by Mel. It's swung on a miss by Wagner. Strike two. Wagner way out in front of a good sinker. Fred Whitfield on deck. Chuck Hinton at first. The hits were picked up by Sims in the second, Hinton in the first, and the ninth, and Larry Brown in the fifth. All singles. Stottlemyre has struck out eight, one of his stronger ball games. Mel Stottlemyre checking, gets, gets the sign. The pitch to Wagner way outside, one ball, two strikes. Mike Hegan went on in the seventh inning for Mantle, who left the ball game. Deacon is playing behind him with the Yankees leading by five here in the last of the ninth. 15,197 on hand. Stottlemyre ready, and Wagner takes outside, two and two. The pattern of this road trip is one that Ralph House would love to have reversed. The Yankees have won the last game in, of each series, but dropped the first three in Detroit, the first two in Baltimore, and the first two here in Cleveland. Bouton and Tillotson throwing for the Yankees as Wagner drills one to right, drops in, base hit. Throw to second base, Hinton not quite sure if it was going to drop, it's not in time. That's the fifth hit off Stottlemyre. The first time that the Indians had two base hits in an inning. Cleveland with runners at first and second. And here's Fred Whitfield, line to left, bounce to second and slide to left. Well, the Indian fans starting to get things going here as the Cleveland Ball Club, for the first time, has put singles back-to-back -back in this ball game against Stottlemyre. Stottlemyre to Fred Whitfield, low and outside, ball one. Yankees and the Indians. Windy, sunny afternoon, Municipal Stadium here in Cleveland, Ohio. The 1-0 pitch to Whitfield, ground ball to Clark. He's got it, flip to Amara for one, throw to first, in time, and that's the ball game, a double play ball that went 4-6-3 for the Indians here in the bottom of the ninth inning. No runs on two hits, one man left. And now for the totals and the highlights, here's Joe Garagiola. Okay, Jerry, the line score for the New York Yankees. Five runs, seven hits, and no errors for the Yankees. No runs, five hits, and one error for Cleveland. The winning pitcher is Saddlemeyer, four and four. That's his third shutout, and the losing pitcher is Gary Bell, one and four. This Yankee broadcast has been brought to you by Atlantic and your Atlantic dealer.